So what are the top three learnings that you'd say you've learned from some of the three best people that you've met? Oh, that's oh, that's the kind of question that somebody should prep and come with an answer for because I feel like you are expecting this to be life changing and you're expecting yeah. this to be life changing. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. So let's just start one by one. The one thing I've learned from Sachin, for example, is preparation. My God, it's crazy. Yeah. Like we'd be doing an event for hundred people. non televised no one's watching but he will say let's meet before we will reach the venue or the city where we are we'll say come for lunch we'll have a chat we'll eat lunch we'll chat we'll plan we'll say we'll take it from here to here let's link this story to that story barely anybody else does that nobody else does that he is so when you hear stories about him pressing his cricket kit one evening before and getting into the zone for the match the next day so that attention to detail and preparation i have uh, learned from him it's just amazing uh, i think from sunil gavaskar from sunny bhai i have just learned humility he is and that humility allows him to have fun he at 70 has a has more sense of fun than a 17 year old wow which is so amazing for somebody who's been around the same world for over for almost what yeah 55 60 years wow he's been around since then right so just that whole idea and i've traveled with him to different parts of the world he's just always up you know say sunny bhai 8 pm glass of wine at the bar sunny bhai will be like 8:15 because I want to go to the gym before. So, wow. your gym, he'll be there sharp 8:15. We'll have a glass of wine. Mr. Sunny Bal has gone for dinner. We'll go for dinner. He has friends in all parts of the world who he's still in touch with. They will come. He when he speaks with people, he will meet normal people, you know, people who are fans of his. You'll forget that this is Mr. 10,000 runs. This is the guy who faced all of the West Indies pace battery without a helmet. Right? This right. little champ right. is a world beater. Correct. He's just kind of so so chill about it. So I, I've been quite fortunate. Like I've met a lot of you know people like that, and I learned so much from him from them. And I've been very lucky to spend a lot of time with Sharuk. From Sharuk, I have learned that you. Oh, I love him. I who doesn't? Right? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? My God, I was just thinking like how many things have I learned from him. Correct that man's <laughs> energy, charm, charisma. Oh my there God, what's go, not right? there to love? There. I think just. <laughs> owning every moment right every interaction with him every human being he touches right he speaks to for one second yeah it's just it's what about him makes that unforgettable oh i know i know what it is i've kind of pinpointed it because he is in that moment the most any human being can be in any moment right it does not matter to him whether the person talking to him what their significance is right where they are on the proverbial societal food chain true right whether they can do something for him or not it doesn't matter to him he is extremely respectable towards everyone i've every not seen being. him any other way so i was hosting one of these conferences for a uh, for a brand and uh, it was a media conference so media was to ask questions and stuff like that and they told me that you have to control this yeah, yeah. questioning whatever you know the job yeah, they ask so, horrible questions they ask horrible questions right <laughs> so these guys were asking some some questions which was which were on the no go list so i was telling these people no 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 we can't take this question and all of that i was doing moderating that round and uh, then came a point and sharuk sharuk was like ये मैडम जो बोलेंगी ना उसी का आंसर करूंगा और किसी का आंसर नहीं करूंगा एंड ही जस्ट नोज हाउ टू ओन पीपल इन दैट मोमेंट यू नो इट्स जस्ट इनक्रेडिबल माय गॉड Hi, welcome to the Journey Within podcast with me Shobha Rana. This podcast is about understanding our inner world. See my inner world is where the processing of emotions, experiences and situations happen for me. How my life looks on the outside and feels on the outside is 
translated a lot by my inner world, how I process things, my emotions, my experiences, what I feel about them. It is extremely important for us to understand our inner world to keep our emotional quotient, our mental quotient, and also our overall emotional well-being in check. Today I have with me uh, somebody who I really look up to. He is a television presenter, extremely handsome entrepreneur, and also a producer. Please welcome Gaurav Kapoor. You said some very deep things in the beginning. I feel like I should leave because I'm not capable of that depth of thought, of process. Come on, so, Gaurav, you're taxi. just being humble. <laughs> you're just being humble. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, those are, uh, are we going to be having these really deep, intelligent conversations? Because uh, I didn't bring my thinking hat today. Yeah, we so will try to deep dive. You have such a such an inspiring career of 23 years and not just the career but the kind of life that you have lived the kind of people that you have interacted with over the years yeah it's just extremely inspiring and it's so much to learn from so uh, gk how did it all start for you what was the origin of this garav kapoor story uh so my parents got married in <laughs> so you won't go back itna piche nahi jana chahiye uh i was uh, actually to just cut a very long story short to just keep the succinct points I used to be a very good student and then I decided that was no fun, right? Fun was being had by people who were creative, who were artistic, who were performers. I realized that there was a performer inside me. So in school, I started performing a lot. I was debating, I would, uh, you know, do dramatics. I was part of the choir while singing. So anything that would get me out of the classroom and onto the stage. And I realized that I really enjoyed interacting with audiences i loved the applause like all creative people and all performers do no matter what they tell you they love the applause you can win them over you know yes you, you have that all knowing smile mujhe pata hai i've been also around for 15 years so mm, i know what you mean is my oxygen <laughs> <laughs> true that is yeah. and now subscribers and that's right <laughs> it's like just follow me i am pied piper uh so i realized that that was really something that i enjoyed a lot and uh, i still harbored some dreams of uh, kind of studying studying economics and you know, getting an mba and working in a bank and being an investment banker and I, and i harbored all those dreams and ambitions but slowly those went out of the window because one happy accident after the other i just kind of you know kept diving deeper into this whole performance space so there was radio then there was channel v mm-hmm. then there was films then there was stage there was more television so mm-hmm. all those things just kept happening mm-hmm. uh, I, i guess somewhere i was possibly willing them uh, or manifesting them which is the the, mm-hmm. the new uh, craze word uh, but i think that's what i wanted to do so it just kind of i went the way life took me or maybe life went the way i took it i'm not sure Uh, I don't think anybody can ever truly be, but I guess they're probably symbiotic, and that's how you just end up where you are. Yeah. Today, you could be a broadcaster sitting at your home, any place in the world, Correct. right? So, when did that moment occur for you when you realized that no, I have to make the move now from Delhi to Bombay? So that was a happy accident as well, because I was in Delhi. I was very happy. I was doing some television, basic television over there. Mm. Uh, Roshan was Roshan Abbas was doing public demand at the time. Uh, but he was going to move to bombay to do other things and direct films and stuff like that so at some point they told me oh if roshan ever decides to quit this show which he might mm-hmm. uh, then we you are tapped you're the next person to do so i was very happy in delhi wow. in my little bubble i had my college friends i had a girlfriend i had i could use my mom's car whenever i wanted so i was pretty set man in delhi middle class first year college kind of ways i was pretty set my mm-hmm. life was set uh, but at that time world space radio was trying to come into india and the team that was doing it you will be surprised to know that raghu rajiv hmm. of rodi's fame right uh, were my seniors from college so they're few years my senior they graduated by the time i joined but they were part of the founding team of producers for world space hmm. so they had seen me in college doing some stuff they had come back to judge something they had seen me long story short they said oh you're a radio jockey yeah we're looking for radio jockeys why don't you come and make some pilots with us hmm. so i made some pilots with them uh there was their boss rohit wed good friend of mine and he was the head producer and they were doing this uh, thing and we worked three four nights on it and we made this but world space never took off this entire team got up and moved to channel v cuz channel v said that we want to go from this cool international channel to one little chapri brand of you know <laughs> boys next door girls next door so these guys all went there and they called me and they said do you want to come to bombay do you want to be a vj uh, and my first reaction would be surprised was no 
Wow. It, it taught me a lot about life. I'll get to that in a second. But why did you say no? Because I was set in Delhi, no? I was yeah. like, hey, what's up here? What do you want to do here? I'm a little bit of a star. I'm a little bit of a star, neighborhood star. You know, got everything over here. Who will go there, man? Bombay. Big bad city. Hmm. Or maybe I was just negotiating. I don't know, subconsciously. But anyway, my first reaction was no. They said, at least come and meet us. So I went to meet. There was Shashank Ghosh, who was part of the founding team at that time. I met him. I met, you know, three, four other people. I was like, these people are pretty cool, man. So they are, uh, we had a really strange, they were interviewing everybody, but me, they were trying to convince some. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, why don't you come? I don't want to come. I'm fine. So somehow, I think they just liked that nonchalance that I had. Maybe that's what they liked. Mm -hmm. And uh, they made me basically an offer, which was pretty much double of all the other people they were hiring at the time because I was not willing to move. So that was a very important entrepreneurial learning for me mm -hmm. early, that the power of no perhaps sometimes is greater than the power of yes. It's the oh, exact yeah. opposite of what a lot of books tell you. <laughs> but sometimes the power of no because... Your your negotiate it just means you know your value and your negotiation mm -hmm. powers increase, uh, but anyway I said no to that and then they wrote this number on a piece of paper very Wall Street Hollywood style and pushed it to me I opened it and I said when do I move, and three oh. days later I was with my bag and baggage in Bombay I literally moved to a mm -hmm. different city mm -hmm. with nowhere to go nothing to do uh, I had this Channel V gig of course mm -hmm. but by nowhere. Nowhere to go. I mean, I had no friends. I had no. I just had of my course. sister here. I came. I stayed with them, but they were grown ups. They had. They were living in Kolaba. I didn't have to be there. I was just. It was very like. Right. I was suddenly just thrown into it without any preparation because right. most people plan and prep and say, "Main is sheher jaunga, main yahan pe kam karunga, hmm. yahan pe kam karungi," and you plan and you make it happen. For me, it happened as a happy accident. I was going to move to Bombay at some point hmm. in time. Hmm. It was Bombay back then, so don't come at me. Uh, so I was going to move to Bombay at some point in time, hmm. but. They just made me this offer, and I just jumped at it, literally. And that's how the Vijaying career started for you. That's how Vijaying started, and it was just I came here, and it was so weird because I would shoot one day a week, and they were paying a lot of money. But at that point in time, that doesn't matter. You just want to be busy. You want to do stuff. You don't want to just hang out in a city you don't know for six days a week doing nothing. Right. You're just wanting to like hustle and stuff. Uh, but uh, I think that also taught me. That time also taught me something very interesting, which is that it's quality that matters, not quantity. So you won't get rewarded just if you get up seven days a week and start hustling eighteen hours a day. You need to have some purpose and you need to have a target to your hustling. Sometimes two hours of work is better than twenty hours of work hmm. when you're focused and you know what you want to get out of it. Hmm. So I think uh, that's an important lesson as well. What did you do on in those six days when you were not working? Did you get I into used to, some learning? Did you get into? Yeah, so you realize slowly that okay, I I need to do something. So what can I do? Uh, let me go to the Channel V office, even on days I'm not shooting, and watch some other shoots, right? Wow. So let me see if I can learn a few other things. I also don't want to be that guy who's always hanging around an office because then people label you a complete vela, mm -hmm. and then they'll give you vela things to do. So you have to balance it, right? So I would know what shoot is happening. I'm like, okay, this is something that I've not seen before. I've not been part of before. Let me just go and sit behind the scenes and see if I can observe something. If I can learn something about camera angles, about lighting, uh, about sound, maybe about how people are interacting, how people are on camera. Uh, maybe I can learn something in terms of discipline, ethics, professionalism. So just always keep your eyes and ears open and learn from people who are more experienced than you. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I always say is you don't just learn from the good things. of people who are more experienced than you sometimes you learn from the bad as well sometimes you learn from their failures sometimes you watch them and you go they can't see the reaction this behavior is having or is mm -hmm. they they're getting this reaction from people around mm -hmm. them but i can see it right mm -hmm. so i should not do this myself mm -hmm. if i'm on shoot right so from a fun wejing job yeah. to cricketing grounds <coughs> How yeah. did the transition happen? Were you upskilling yourself to learn all about cricket? Although cricket is anyway a religion in our country, and most of the kids growing up kind of follow cricket and stuff like that. I've been watching cricket since I was four or five years old, so I had to upskill myself none, right? Uh -huh. So what happened is when I got into live cricket broadcasting, it was the two loves of my life. One is performing live, hmm. and the other is cricket. So I was like a kid in a candy store. I mean, ये कैसे हो गया? How does this work? और इसके पैसे भी मिल रहे हैं और बहुत सारे या काफी सारे मिल रहे हैं ये तो मेरे को एक बार ही अजय जडेजा ने कहा था सात आठ साल पहले वी वर डूइंग एक्स्ट्रा इनिंग्स वन डे एंड वी वर इन द मिड्स ऑफ नेगोशिएशंस फॉर द नेक्स्ट ईयर और समथिंग वाज सम नेक्स्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वाज हैपनिंग 
and uh, ajay who's my big brother came into my green room and he said are sir ye to pagal hai inko to pata hi nahi aap to free mein bhi kar doge maine kaha bhai aap zara ye zor se na bole agar unko sunai de gaya to badi problem ho jayegi main bhi badi ladai kar raha hu unke sath theek hai so again it's it's true if i have to do this for free i'm like dude like yeah of course uh, but again you've got to negotiate you got to make people believe that you know that it's okay if i don't do it it's fine right because mm, that's right. how you that's how you negotiate uh, but anyway at that point in time i was super happy cuz again i was live no problem live me there are a few things that work to advantage there are some people who don't like doing live i love doing live because a that adrenaline i only wake up when i know that there is no safety net it's like doing a trapeze without a safety net right safety net right. ho to aapko pata hai aapka haath agar chhoot bhi gaya na aapne nahi pakda wo niche gir jab aapko pata hai ki jaan pe aa gayi hai baat correct right to wo alag hi andar se adrenaline rush aata hai so mm. i really get off on that i love it mm. uh, secondly you know what time you'll start and what time you'll finish it's amazing right because <laughs> you know what happens with shoots <laughs> in this right? business yeah yeah, is, yeah you have no idea you have no idea when an event will finish you of have course. no idea when a shoot will finish mm. दो बजे खत्म होना होता है छह बजे खत्म होता है चार बजे स्टार्ट होना होता है आठ बजे स्टार्ट होता है बेस्ट थिंग अबाउट क्रिकेट लाइव ब्रॉडकास्टिंग इज यू नो मेन इट विल स्टार्ट यू नो मेन इट विल फिनिश ठीक है कब घर से निकलना है कब वापस आओगे सब पता है मेरे को वो ना अपनी एज पे वो कंफर्ट बड़ा अच्छा लगता है ठीक है क्या आपको पता है आप कहा जा रहे हैं सो लॉर्ड ऑफ दीज थिंग्स आई मीन जोक्स पार्ट आई रियली लव द फैक्ट दैट द एड्रेनल इन रश एंड द फैक्ट दैट आई वॉज एंटरटेनिंग पीपल in a space that mm. i have loved and has entertained me since i was a child which is cricket mm. so i was super happy and I, and the thing is because i'd worked in channel b for 6 years i didn't have to convince anybody about my television presenting skills right, right? and luckily for me since i had met so many people and because i had been on channel b which used to have no brief you could do you could really express your personality there right, right. cuz the people there were also crazy enough to let that go and they 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 wanted Things weren't that as scripted back in the day would you say ek maine to script nahi padhi kabhi apni life mein nahi padhi ab to sab prompter aa gaye hain pura ek ek taaliyan bajane ke liye it's written bilkul applause likha hota hai sab kuch to mere ko to mere ko to prompter mere ko to padhna hi nahi aata mere ko mere liye to काला अक्षर भैंस बराबर राइट इफ पीपल कॉल मी एंड दे टेल मी दैट चार घंटे आपको बिना स्क्रिप्ट के ऑडियंस से बात करनी है मैंने कहा कैमरा लगाओ माइक ऑन करो चलो राइट right? कोई मुझे बोले आपको ये पांच लाइन लर्न करके बोलनी है मैंने कहा भाई किसी और को बुला लो मेरे से तो नहीं हो पाएगी hmm. ना मैं रोड लर्निंग स्कूल में कर पाया ना मैं स्क्रिप्ट में कर पाता हूँ सो दैट्स वाई एक्टिंग वॉज टफ फॉर मी एक्टिंग वॉज ईजी फॉर मी एट अ टाइम वेन यू कुड इम्प्रूव राइट बैक इन टू थाउजेंड फोर फाइव कोई स्क्रिप्ट नहीं होती थी जिस वहीं पर लिखते थे सेट पे Really? <laughs> काफी चीजें लाइनें सेट पे चेंज होती थी ये सब होता था बाउंड स्क्रिप्ट बहुत लेट आनी शुरू हुई इस इंडस्ट्री में जब बाउंड स्क्रिप्ट आनी शुरू हुई और पर लाइन पर वर्ड डायरेक्टर कह रहे हैं सर ये चेंज मत करिए वो तो मैंने कहा भाई अब ये ज्यादा हो गया हमें माफ कर दो क्योंकि हमसे एक्चुअली लाइव बड़ा फन होता है इन दैट वे बिकॉज आई फील लाइव एंड स्टूडियो में जो डिफरेंस है या शूट में जो डिफरेंस है दैट इज दैट यू आर हंड्रेड परसेंट देर वेन यू आर शूटिंग लाइव वेन यू डूंग शूट और समथिंग यू कुड बी डिस्ट्रैक्टेड इन टू योर फोन दिस इन दैट इन ब्ला ब्ला बट ड्यूरिंग द लाइव यू आर जस्ट देयर इन दैट मोमेंट हंड्रेड परसेंट एंड आई थिंक दैट इज वे यू ड्रॉ योर एनर्जी फ्रॉम एंड दैट इज वे यू ऑल्सो लेट योर क्रिएटिविटी ब्रीद इन इन दट वे Every time when it's happening, yeah, true. So things like spontaneity and all of that you build uh, at that very moment. I, I love it. It really excites me. I have, uh, like you said, you know, when there is a net somewhere, you don't like it's okay. Mm-hmm. I can stop for two minutes. So I want a glass of water. I want to go. Then when you're on stage and you feel your throat is itchy and you yeah, have to figure yeah. how to have a sip of water while mm-hmm. not breaking the flow of the show. even those small small challenges small things you know when i'm shooting i'm like how am i looking mirror ye wo but when you're sh- when you're live you're live you yeah. don't bother about your looks you don't bother about anything you just bother about entertaining the viewers Absolutely at that point absolutely right yes yeah, that's a good point. one agenda yeah that's it there's nothing else distracting you from your job that you love so much yeah. so i think um uh, with live you are 100% there yeah. so that's one reason for a, me to love my job yeah i'm not a big fan of all the retakes and everything yeah. fine maybe one maybe two but whenever it goes into more than that it kind of starts boring me a little bit garav uh, you have been with some of the legends cricketing legends over yeah. the years and you have <clears> been in close rooms with them yeah. i'm sure you've had your interactions so what are the top 3 learnings that you'd say you've learned from some of the three best people that you've met oh that's Oh, that's the kind of question that somebody should prep and come with an answer for because i feel like you are expecting this to be life changing and you're expecting yeah. this to be life changing that's a lot of pressure uh 
well, see, there is, uh, I think the one thing I have learned, so let's just start one by one. The one thing I've learned from Sachin, for example, is preparation. My God, it's crazy. Yeah. Like we'd be doing an event for 100 people, non-televised, no one's watching. But he will say, let's meet before we will reach the venue or the city where we are. We'll say, come for lunch, we'll have a chat. We'll eat lunch, we'll chat, we'll plan. We'll say, we'll take it from here to here. Let's link this story to that story. Barely anybody else does that. Nobody else does that. He is so, when you hear stories about him pressing his cricket kit one evening before and getting into the zone for the match the next day. So that attention to detail and preparation, I have uh, learned from him. Mm. It's just amazing. Uh, I think from Sunil Gavaskar, from Sunny Bhai, I have just learned humility. He is, and that humility allows him to have fun. He at 70 has a, has more sense of fun than a 17 year old. Wow. Which is so amazing for somebody who's been around the same world for over, for almost years. what, yeah, 55, 60 years. Wow. He's been around since then, right? So just that whole idea, and I've traveled with him to different parts of the world. He's just always up. You know, say, Sunny Bhai, 8 p.m., glass of wine at the bar. Sunny Bhai will be like, 8.15 because I want to go to the gym before. So, wow. gym, he'll be there, sharp 8.15. We'll have a glass of wine. We'll say, Sunny Bhai, let's go out for dinner. We'll go for dinner. He has friends in all parts of the world who he's still in touch with. They will come. He, When he speaks with people, he will meet normal people, you know, people who are fans of his. You'll forget that this is Mr. 10,000 Runs. This is the guy who faced all of the West Indies pace battery without a helmet, right? This right. little champ right. is a world beater. Correct. He's just kind of so, so chill about it. So I, I've been quite fortunate. Like I've met a lot of, you know, people like that and I learned so much from him, from them. And I've been very lucky to spend a lot of time with Shah Rukh. From Shah Rukh, I have learned that you... Oh, I love him. I who, doesn't, right? who doesn't? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? I was just thinking, like, how many things have I learned from him? Correct. That man's <laughs> energy, charm, charisma. Oh my there God, what's go, not right? there to love? <laughs> there. I think just owning every moment, right? Every interaction with him, every human being he touches, right? He speaks to for one second. Yeah. It's just, it's what about him makes that unforgettable. Oh I know, I know what it is. I've kind of pinpointed it because... He is in that moment the most any human being can be in any moment. Right. It does not matter to him whether the person talking to him, what their significance is. Right. Where they are on the proverbial societal food chain. True. Right. Whether they can do something for him or not. It doesn't matter to him. He is if, extremely respectable towards everyone. I've every not seen being. him any other way so i was hosting one of these conferences for a uh, for a brand and uh, it was a media conference so media was to ask questions and stuff like that and they told me that you have to control this yeah, yeah. questioning whatever you know the job yeah, they ask so, horrible questions they ask horrible questions right <coughs> so these guys were asking some some questions which was which were on the no go list so i was telling these people no 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 we can't take this question and all of that i was doing moderating that round and uh, then came a point and sharuk sharuk was like ye madam jo bolengi na usi ka answer karunga aur kisi ka answer nahi karunga and he just knows how to own people in that moment, you yeah, know. Yeah. It's just incredible. My God. So those are my three learnings. Wow, I think I came up pretty solid with them. Huh? You did pretty well. <laughs> it's pretty it? good. Wow. I'd say so. Uh, GK, what is the role of humility in this business? Uh, we meet people who achieve success overnight. We meet people who have been around in the business for 30, 40 years and yet yeah. been able to, you know, not crack it, as they call it. So where does humility come into play for all of this. I think as a storyteller, that's the thing you need to have most. Because how do you get your stories? Your stories are essentially your observations of things that are happening. Mm. Sometimes to you and sometimes around you. Right? But the humility that you need as a person is your first humility you have to have is that you're not bigger than the universe. Right? Because we know a lot of people who are deluded enough to think that they are. In this business especially. You may be running one little small unit, one family, one business, one, company, one group. Whatever. Right? Yeah, 
दे विल ऑल्सो रन विदाउट यू बिकॉज दैट्स द वे द वर्ल्ड गोज ये दुनिया का दस्तूर है राइट right? चलती आई है दुनिया hmm. इतने हजारों अरबों सालों से सो द ह्यूमिनिटी यू नीड टू हैव दैट एवरी सिचुएशन इज एक्चुअली बिगर देन यू राइट एंड इफ यू रियलाइज दैट यू आर जस्ट अ लिटल इवन वेन यू यूज दैट ऑफ यू साइंटिफिक रीजन यू जस्ट अ लिटल डॉट ऑन अ लिटल ब्लू डॉट इन दिस जाइंट वर्ल्ड आई थिंक दैट ह्यूमिलिटी इफ यू हैव इन यूर डेली इंटरक्शन एज वेल I think that helps because what that humility gives you is the ability to learn from people who you think perhaps on paper you don't have anything to learn from mm. right but of course you do and if you have that humility as a person as a storyteller you will absorb so much because you will absorb from uh I will absorb from people who are in this room I will I will absorb from you I will absorb from the maybe the person who's standing at the gate mm. i will absorb from you know the person who is taking a you know cycle load of things mm. across the road you need to cuz nobody's really better than anyone yeah humility yeah. builds this observational power in you absolutely right. and as a storyteller that is gold mm. because i have not met one storyteller not one in my life who doesn't have good observational skills true and today all of life is about storytelling whether you're pitching a startup whether you're a television presenter like yourself whether you're a director writer content creator anything, anything. right today any business any because all businesses are people oriented and what do people want people want stories mm. right now i'm not saying that a startup has to pitch fabricated stories you don't mm. start saying once upon a time but some mm. startups pitch like that also so that's fine <laughs> but uh, but the, it's the story right even when i tell you fact Right. if i package it in a nice storytelling format you are more prone to absorb it's not digestible it. yeah yeah so True. that's it everyone's a storyteller and mm-hmm. everybody needs to have good powers of observation and humility gk you spoke about humility and power of observation yeah. uh let's talk about power of resting also because yeah. in this business you're constantly on the run yeah. and you have toured to some of the uh, greatest countries in the world and you know have been on the pitch and the field with the yeah. players and then off the pitch also doing shoots with them when do you get time to rest and how much do you prioritize resting over work okay so i am a i'm one of the most lazy ambitious people you'll meet in your life but i've kind of figured out that i've figured out that at least when covid happened and post that is that you can't just operate in one gear like i said before it's very important to know when to i, I think that's also one key parameter of for for longevity is that you can't just be in people's face every day so there is no point in running around every day you'll either burn out or you'll just collapse so what's the point of that uh, you want to be around to actually enjoy your success right so for sure. that you need to sleep well you need to rest you need to eat well you need to exercise you need to prioritize family friends your own time if you notice i've just listed seven things and none of them is work right mm. because that's a part of everything else people make this mistake of saying that oh, i'm only going to work and there's no point because your work is your work is not getting the best of you then right mm. the best of you is whole you mm. when you're complete as a whole then everything that you do is getting the best of you because you're giving all your unfragmented energy to that one thing at that point in time mm. but you can't just keep doing it mm. so i prioritize me time friend time family time mm. all of this so highly mm. that i will happily say no to work if something seems really hectic yes it's easy for people to say that i can do it now after being in the business for 20 years and that is true but that is one of my parameters for success mm. is that do i now have to do do i need to do things no i will only do things i want to do mm. and in my want to do things my producing happens because of that i will produce mm. the things that i really want to Mm. I don't want to keep a team of a hundred people, and then we have to do things mm. because we need to. Because mm. you got to feed those mouths, mm. right? Mm. So keep that team small. What am I doing in terms of personal? Well, I need to rest. I need to take you know whatever a couple of weeks off, mm. and not, you know I need to keep a break between these two shoots. So I can't take two back to back gigs because that will mean I have to drive through the night somewhere. No, I've done it mm. in my younger years. Mm. In my twenties, I did all those things. Mm. But in your twenties, your body, your system can take a lot more. which age nobody has escaped it which i am now realizing it yeah. because uh, these days a simple cough and cold would last you weeks yeah. a simple headache will last you 3 days yeah. and it's just bizarre 
somebody was asking me what happened you've not keeping well i said 30 <coughs> happened nothing else <laughs> yeah true <laughs> that's the true story <laughs> no and we also the time we live in like i have ever since i got back to mumbai like 3 days back i was breathing clean air on an island in thailand for a week and i've come back in 2 days of this pollution this 300 plus aqi mm-hmm. and i've got this <coughs> this little you know you feel Constantly this cough going on. so we're yeah. also living in a time which is like this so you have to take care of yourself uh, mm-hmm. a little more so what for me what are your uh, top 3 ways of self care so 8 hours of sleep is super important right 8 hours of sleep and if sometimes even after 8 hours of sleep if i'm feeling groggy in the daytime i'm not averse to taking a 20 minute nap i'll do it yeah. i'm like what the hell man there's nothing that can't wait yeah. there's nothing that's so critical i am not doing open heart surgery mm. right let's face it most of us are not M- most of us are not right unless i have to be live on air everything else whether it's a meeting whether it's you heard before we started i pushed a meeting by 2 hours because i figured that at that time i need to be in a family situation you make a call you ask politely everybody adjusts there is right. no problem right you but you have to ask the question no mm. if you are only not prioritizing it mm. then how will somebody else mm. it is not my job to prioritize your health true right it is your job to prioritize your health mm. if i am telling you let's shoot at 2 in the morning and if you are saying okay fine maybe you know you're not going to be your best and you're still showing up then well, that's on you correct right you have to put your foot down and say no i can't shoot at 2 in the morning because i i don't work in a call center yeah. i am not ar rahman right <laughs> i am not sharukh khan right i can't yeah, work right. at 2 in the morning <laughs> right so uh, we'll do it at, so you have to prioritize your health and rest so 8 hours of sleep is super important uh, then some form of exercise every day is super important so whether it's doing some basic stretching in yoga whether it's you know going for a walk oh, and a run do you do yoga no like very basic like literally like a beginner's beginner yeah. like a toddler uh, or whether it's going to the gym uh, you know I'm, during covid i made a little gym at home you know whether it's some functional training core training whatever you're doing something basically or the basically including other. some movement in your diet. you got to because that's good for your mind mm. like you know when i tell people oh i just went for a one hour walk they go like but you're not 80 I'm like yeah but do you know what it does for your mind mm. it gives you great ideas whatever little fresh air you can get in our cities it gives you that right. you watch people when you watch 100 people around you doing the same thing it kind of boosts your spirits mm-hmm. so i think all these things kind of really work and i definitely every day will take out time to just like sit back and stare at the ceiling and think of nothing wow just that's my meditation that's your meditation right yeah i just like kind of zone out for a little while it helps clear my head it just helps relax me it just keeps me like that it helps a lot in boosting creativity also and all Whether these things actually have genuinely taken my stress away hmm. i don't like see the stressful situations are mandatory but you taking stress is optional hmm. very well said actually i learned this from uh, i was we were one of my early productions we were filming in london and it's expensive to film in london and uh, we were shooting this one show and i set up the crew everything happened and i was supposed to meet a friend for lunch madhu mantena who's a producer so mm-hmm. i was meeting him for lunch in london and uh, the shoot got cancelled the crew was all waiting and i got a call saying the shoot has got cancelled person who was supposed to come is not coming or whatever something has happened he said you are you in loss i said no you said how does it matter then i was like yeah you're right how does it matter mm-hmm. so i called my director and i said please tell the entire crew to bill us for the full day because they came right mm. all the camera people all the crew technical crew being an artist you also know that Everybody if you had been there. on other side you would have expected to be paid because so you made time you... i said uh, i called them and i said just tell them that they'll all get paid they came for the time and that's fine they'll all get paid and it was so amazing because i had spent some time with them perhaps or something mm. i got a call back in 10 minutes say saying they're saying they'll only take half the money because the shoot got cancelled so they only take half their days the age mm. i was like that's so sweet mm. so immediately because i didn't stress and didn't get worked up and i offered what i felt was a fair solution they came back with something understanding saying all right these are good producers mm. they are being respectful to us mm. we should also reach out a little bit we mm. came we didn't work we just had had coffee mm. uh, that's fine a day is gone but we should charge uh, so it just all worked out and i hung up the phone 5 minutes later because i i approached the situation with no stress it actually worked out in my favor 
that is absolutely a brilliant way to look at that situation yeah. because where you were making 100% losses and you could have completely you know uh, stressed about the situation fret about it and stuff yeah. there you made up your mind that you already lost that money and now you're so in 50% gain yeah you know that's the mindset that you're operating from and that's just what changes is not the situation but your approach towards the situation yeah. and i think that's where this whole concept of inner translation uh, inner world happens from where you process things and how you see things and then how you work and execute on those things yeah. right um uh, got of loop, looping back to the conversation that we were having about need to and want to yes. whether i need to do it or, or do it or i want to do it now uh, most of us uh, the kind of lives that we are leading today we don't need to however much we feel unless and until you are not able to put food on the table or a roof over your head then probably you need to yeah. but if that is sorted then you probably just calling it need to and making it more stressful for yourself yeah and at that situation you should rather focus on what you want to yeah you know that is where uh, your own inspiration about your own life your own mission and vision that you stand for or that you want to make for yourself that comes in so there's a very high level of emotional quotient that is required to sort of navigate between these meanings which yeah. you have been able to do brilliantly so where does the role of emotional quotient emotional intelligence comes in for you in your journey thus far i rate eq higher than iq any day right uh see is the thing we all have there's one thing that we can never create is time right you and me have the same 24 hours that chef bezos mark zuckerberg and shahrukh khan have right nobody no matter how successful or how rich they are has a 25th hour in a day so we all working on this basic starting point the given in this mathematical equation is that hmm. we all have 24 hours so since you can't create any more it's how much value you put in these right mm. with time you can't increase the quantity of time so therefore what must you do is increase the quality of time right mm. so why are more some people more successful than the other because they can get more quality done in a minute or an hour than the rest of us mm. right and we can do perhaps more than the rest of them who can then do so that's why there are varying levels of prosperity or success as the world calls it right mm. so i feel that when you have that realization ki bhai itna hi hai time theek hai ab ya to main isme pagalon ki tarah haath pair maar lo hmm ya main ek kadam piche lu to leap five steps ahead hmm. right and when i mean take that step back that step back is prioritizing strategizing and then executing hmm. right so when you do that you realize that this i have this much energy this much time i can do it in doing i can expend it in doing this because i feel like i need to do it but then what happened to my dreams and aspirations true but my dreams and aspirations are to do this but this is taking me in the opposite direction hmm. then why do i have to do this but then why do we feel a need to a compulsive need rather to do something but it's the world right it's the world that we live in which quantifies success in one very cookie cutter way right which is material possessions hmm. objects earnings hmm. right if that's yours Then of course, go for go it. Up, man. Go up, Then go yeah. for it. No one's stopping you. Mm. But if you, <coughs> if you are at all an emotional person, and emotional gain, emotional happiness are important for you, well, then you have to take the other path, mm. which is that you have to do the things you want to do. But for that, you have to first. It's very easy said, but for that, first you have to think of what do you really want. Mm. Right. True. If what you want. is to just be busy 24 hours a day that's fine i'm not judging you mm. then you do everything true then you get up and you move and you move and then one day when your doctor tells you that listen your heart needs trouble is is in trouble so you need to sleep for 8 hours a day then you start sleeping 8 hours a day because that is what you need to do to be more successful so <laughs> you're then constantly you just running a need to loop correct yeah so yeah. you are chasing that but that's yeah, the life yeah, you've yeah. chosen so go for it yeah. then there are people who are maybe more artistic who are maybe you know whose eqs are slightly different i'm not saying higher or lower because mm. that again kind of ranks mm. it mm. uh but you you your radios are a different frequency than my radio mm. uh and i believe that for me uh at this point in time in my life again we are moving goal posts so mm. things change mm. what i wanted 10 years ago is not what i want now you have to stay in tune with that mm. and uh, mine is that oh i want to be you know emotionally satisfied i want to be happy mm. i want to make correct choices i want to kind of optimize my time so i'm sure. big on the word optimization for that mm. i need to know what i want i want this and this i don't want this mm. so therefore i'm not going to do it oh they're offering me a lot of money do i really need this money mm. oh crap i just bought a house i need to renovate it okay i'm going to suck it up and i'm going to do it 
I'm like, oh, I've already renovated my house and I'm already living in it happily. So now I don't need this cash for anything specific. In the long tally in life, and I calculated after working 40 years, 50 years, hopefully if I live that long, will I look at this money and go, oh, yaar, ye bhi aaja to? Nahi, utna mein to nahi hai na, ko 500 karo nahi de raha. To bechte ta mein apne soul ko, apne family, all have a price, right? To 500 crores, maybe I would have sold my soul. But this is not that. So let's not like, it's okay, I don't really need to, right? I, like you said, don't have to pay my rent. I don't have to put a shirt on my back, a meal on my table. You know, don't have to put kids through school. There's, there's nothing. So it's okay. It's fine. Mm. It's cool. What is, what would this mean? This would probably mean, oh, uh, another FD. Mm. This would be another, <laughs> another pair of nice shoes. I don't know, another nice holiday. It's okay. It's, it's cool. Okay. I'm Doesn't cool. Matter. I'm taken care of. So yeah. you need to prioritize and know what is important mm. and what you really want. And that question only you can answer for yourself. That question needs a lot of introspection, reflection, contemplation meditation and what not to figure that answer out some people figure it out early on probably and that also keeps changing the definition <laughs> keeps evolving yeah. for what you want out of your life and for some people they spend their whole life just walking through it and not been able to realize maybe unke liye wo hai. i Shai. guess maybe they are happy with that hmm. some hmm. people don't want to like i remember no, there was a phase in my life when people asked me yaar what is purpose i'm like maybe we're not all meant to have a purpose man mm -hmm. like hum pata nahi what is this great question we're trying to answer mm -hmm. i'm just trying to get through the day man mm -hmm. i'm trying to get through the day without any stress no, but spread if, some if happiness that is personally your uh, definition yeah. of how you want to live your day then that's cool so kai hai jo who are rolling through that kai hai jo baith ke 25 ghante dhyan lagayenge ke i want to evolve mm -hmm. and find a better purpose and to each his or her own mm -hmm. right i mm -hmm. say that's nee, good but, but you that... need to find it Right. But worse is when you get stuck with this question or you're not happy with the life that you're leading now and you're not able to figure out what you want to do that will make your soul click or happy. True. You know, but for that also you need to take a step back and say what is happening right now that I need to eradicate from my life. Correct. Right. I can say that I want this but there should be a place in the throat. If the throat is full, then it will be out of the way. You have to remove it from the throat. So you have to remove it from it. You see that there is something which is giving me indigestion. Right. So look at it. And that's the hard question, right? What is that thing that you're doing, the task, the relationship, the condition, life condition that you're in, mm. something you're doing mm. is not agreeing with you. Mm. So instead of thinking that I'm going to wake up one day with an epiphany saying, oh, this is what I want, mm. you could, you could get it also, where will you put it? Mm. True, true. So removing something out of your thali and then keep putting whatever you feel like doing in that moment and see what sticks or what doesn't cause you indigestion. Yeah, in true, <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. So it's a slow process. It's a hard process. But mm. I guess we all say we're looking for answers, mm. but none of us are ready to acknowledge the questions. And we need Very to valid. acknowledge those hard questions first. Mm. And live with those questions. We are just in a rush to find the answers. Even if the question comes to us, we are just so, uh, you know, uh, greedy for the answers that we yeah. don't take time to sit with the questions. Yeah, you need to sit and with the And even the questions evolve at times sometimes, you know. True. Yeah. You evolve, things change. I'm saying now that your, your purpose and you actually, they're all, it's like planets, no? Hmm. Planets align. So it's very hmm. rare when hmm. they align. But that's what happens. You just, you are moving. Your wants are moving. Your purpose is moving. Hmm. Everybody around you is moving. moving. So you constantly have to be in some state of emotional awareness. Because uh, every day is different, right? So I'm not saying you sit every day and you think deep hmm. and you go. But you have some basic rules that you set for yourself, which is I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to try and take care of the people around me, people who are dependent on me. I'm going to fulfill my responsibilities. Try to be hmm. kind. Hmm. Try to be humble. Try not to be people around nice yeah. you know you just there are some basic right. things you should get up and and go with go in with life it. pretty as much as like um you know i'm gonna have a shower and i'm or gonna take a glass of water brush my teeth you know those things you should make these emotional habits also your daily habits mm -hmm. uh so at least give keep... me a three-pointer list of these emotional habits to build <clears throat> that will help you be a nicer human being uh so i used to have a lot of anger issues when i was younger right i used to be a typical delhi punjabi boy mm -hmm like flying off the handle for like everything. Uh, then I taught myself, I said, wait, two things. One is, if there is a person who, so there you two kinds of people piss you off. People you don't care about and people you care about. Right? So, <laughs> Those are the only two categories two kinds of people, apparently. Right? So <laughs> the it, approach is different for both. Yeah. For the people who you don't care about, you they will piss you off. 
if somebody is aggravating you and somebody is actually coming and pushing you well then of course the reaction is different but if someone is saying something that's really irritating you like do i do i i, I can just walk away from this mm. why do i need to engage mm. do i need to engage choosing person, your battles wisely this person doesn't mean anything to me true uh, like something keanu reeves said he said i'm on stage in my life where if somebody says 2 plus 2 is 5 i don't argue with the person i, I just, just say not my head and move congratulations <laughs> all the best with that and i just walk and I, that was such a great learning just be calm yeah. it's okay you're trying to aggravate me but i've never met you i probably never meet you again what you're saying has no impact on me why do i need to engage with you mm. i'm just going to walk so calmness in that situation right because sure. me getting angry is just poisoning my own pot i should not just walk away then there are people you care about you can't walk away from them <laughs> in some cases you can but in most cases you don't want to uh with those my reaction is different earlier when anybody said something like like 10 out of 10 humans if somebody is critical of you you fight back mm. what the hell what do you mean uh, mm. we do that in relationships with parents friends we do that with everyone uh then i said wait actually if this person is saying something to me they have a vantage point mm. they have such a good seat to my drama and my mess right maybe they've seen something that i've not seen so i actually what could be perceived as an opportunity to fight for me is an opportunity to learn so i immediately flipped it right immediately said okay i may still fight with you in 5 minutes hmm. right <laughs> may still argue with you in 5 minutes but wait let me just absorb what you just said but are you able to do it in that moment i can do it in that moment i'm like yeah. ignore it reserve matlab i don't say stop yeah I'm like okay you just said something you're fighting you said something to me i'm like okay i can think there's nobody here there's no cameras there's no rule book mm. that says fight club that you punch me i have to punch you back immediately yeah yeah i, I can actually sit and go hmm, does he or she have a point mm. do i actually do this maybe i do but agar aap sunne ko hi taiyar nahi hai aur agar aap usko absorb karne ke liye taiyar nahi hai to phir aap usko एक्सेप्ट और रिजेक्ट तो कर ही नहीं सकते ना करेक्ट तो मैंने कहा पहले मैं इसको ऑब्जॉर्व करूंगा प्रोसेस करूंगा कर देते हैं मैं प्रोसेस करूंगा फिर अगर मैं रिजेक्ट करूं देन इज फाइन करेक्ट बट देन आई विल आल्सो हैव अ रीजन व्हाई आई एम रिजेक्टिंग इट नॉट जस्ट नी जर्क राइट करेक्ट बट अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स आई हैव एक्चुअली ऑब्जर्वड एंड लर्नड या फ्रॉम थिंग्स माय फ्रेंड्स हैव टोल्ड मी फ्रॉम थिंग्स माय लवर्स हैव टोल्ड मी फ्रॉम थिंग्स माय पेरेंट्स हैव टोल्ड मी माय सिब्लिंग्स हैव टोल्ड मी एंड दे डोंट टेल दे विल क्रिटिसाइज इट विल कम आउट एज एन आर्ग्युमेंट एट सम पॉइंट इन टाइम you like yeah maybe i can learn so my anger trigger response has changed in both reactions mm. i'm just like it's cool man so that's one habit i try to keep through the day i still have i will still vent if i'm sitting with a really close friend mm. and if something happens i feel like if i just vent for 2 minutes i'm fine but well, good i'll vent because there's people also find it amusing yeah. so i just vent and i'll say two three funny things and i'll say two three angry things and it'll be done and it's gone nobody's hurt and we go ahead kindness i try to keep through the day so calmness i try to keep and kindness i try to keep and the third thing which i believe in life that we all should do we are all anybody who's watching this is perhaps watching it on their own screen and have a roof over their head don't have to worry about their next meal and uh, that's a position of privilege yeah in today's world right that's a privilege the fact that you can watch this on a screen today Absolutely. is a privilege if you have privilege i feel that it is your moral obligation and duty to the universe to leave everything a little better than when you found it every situation every person everything every place everything you touch everything that touches you mm. just have to leave it a little better than when you found it so that's the kind of value addition i feel if i can do in life i'd be very happy that is so brilliant uh, a way to look at life a perspective to look at life uh especially what you said about anger and connecting that to learnability yeah. because the things that make you uncomfortable others saying certain things to you that trigger you or an anger response in you those are also your windows to look into your own life and see why is it bothering me yeah and once you answer that question you sort of sort yourself out for the years ahead yeah you, you know? do and every every failed relationship every failed friendship uh every argument every disagreement is actually mm. an opportunity to learn it is i'm not saying i do it 10 out of 10 nobody is mm. that perfect mm. you know but i try to do as much of it as i can there are a few times where i will just get into an argument with mm. just for the sake of it i'm just i'm getting into this i have to win this argument it doesn't matter 
right? I'll do that as well. That's a human tendency. And that's also something you have to keep admitting to yourself that whatever your purpose was, whatever you thought was bettering you, you are not there. You never will be there. Mm. It's a constant daily process and grind, right? There are people who have, people, younger people probably understand this better, people who have six packs and who are ripped. Mm. You know, they ripped to get the bed. Gay. You have to keep doing it every day. To maintain that. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, that six pack will become a family pack in no time. No time. Correct. <laughs> right. Ji, can share with me one of your biggest failures and what you learned from there? <coughs> I think one of my early failures, and this was at a time actually where I didn't have too much money. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'd spent Now you have too much money. No, no, no. <laughs> that you have just acknowledged. <laughs> you picked up on that. But that time, but I'll tell you why. Because I had like most Indian middle class dreams is to buy a house. Correct. And I had bought a house. And I had... Uh, uh, I had no project lined up. I had nothing. So my money had just finished. Mm -hmm. And I took up a job for, that's not great money, but I actually did it because I needed to do it. Mm -hmm. Right? How long back was this? This was about 12 years back. Okay. Right? So I was fairly young, but I learned this lesson quite early. And uh, I didn't want to do the show. I didn't want to do it on that channel. It was a show on, there was a channel called Bindas at the time. Mm -hmm. And there was some show it wasn't emotional atyachar, but it was something like that. It was yeah, some yeah. dating show. I think Bindas doesn't exist anymore, is it? I'm not surprised. I, I uh, have no clue. I'm not surprised. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, even Channel V doesn't exist anymore. The name of reality anymore. TV, what torture we have been but fed. I, was, I, I said yes to one of those shows, yeah. Really? I as a contestant? Yes to, or no, as, as a presenter. Still better I said yes to one of those shows. And I was there for two or three episodes. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? Hmm. This is not my sensibility. I have done this because I need to renovate this house and I wanted to buy this furniture and, you know, Whatever. put this big TV and all these fancy <laughs> gadgets in it. And uh, uh, Shubha, I quit it, yeah. Uh, I actually, after four or five episodes, I went to them and I said, guys, please mujhe maaf kar do, yaar. Ye galti ho And I am telling you that me being on the show actually takes away from the show. Uh, you will find five other presenters. I, I was at least honest with them. I was like, this is really not my sensibility, uh, right? And I'm miserable doing this show. Mm. I'm really sorry. I fought with them for two, three episodes mm. and can we change the way? Because Bola Kuch Tha Hua Kuch, mm -hmm. which is very regular. Which happens. Uh, but at that time, I had to like put my foot down mm -hmm. and say, no, mm -hmm. I know I really needed that money. Mm. But I said, no, man, it's not worth it because I'm compromising on my ideology, my ethics. Mm -hmm. itna, matlab, I'm no like Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. Gandhi ji, anything. Mm -hmm. But still, mere jo hai sensibility, I don't ever want to be on a set and be miserable. Mm. or think yeah, kya kar rahe. Mm. and that happened with that show and I quit it and that was my big learning yeah that unless you truly truly believe in the people truly believe in the concept truly believe in the vision don't do it and if all those align then actually the money will end up being better than something you did as a mercenary mm. because everything aligns and they value you more also no because it's Correct. actually aligned because you are putting in uh, what's needed because you're the best for it actually Correct. You're the yeah. best for it. And if you're the best for it, you will get paid more. If you're trying to force fit into something and they're trying to force fit into you, how can the money be the best? Mm. Because nobody wants to watch that, right? Mm. People want to watch when it's kind of a seamless confluence mm. of ideas and ideologies. Mm. Uh, so that was a that was a big failure because that show was, was horrible. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, the other thing I learned, uh, which was a couple of years later, was uh, about favors and gratitude, right? So, Sony uh, got the 2014 Football World Cup. Hmm. I used to do extra innings for them every year. Right. Right after extra innings finished, a week later, two weeks later, the FIFA World Cup was starting, 2014. Now, we had just finished an extra innings. 2014 was a great year. Lots of plays. Everything mm -hmm. is happening. You're riding a high. And Sony called me and said that two days later, this World Cup was starting and their presenter for the first seven days had just backed out. Mm. I don't know who it was, but he just backed out. This, can you please step in? I was like, guys, I can't because I don't know football that well. Right? So I really can't. Mm -hmm. And they said, please, can you do this? We are like families. And they were really stuck. And I said, if you're stuck, then of course I'm there. Mm -hmm. And that was a humongous mistake because I got drilled a couple of extra holes when <laughs> I did that. And rightfully so, because I was horrible. Yeah. I've, I, I know I'm a fairly competent television presenter. Mm. <coughs> but I did not have the domain expertise, right? I didn't know all the teams that were playing. Mm. 36 hours was not enough to do homework on 
ट्वेंटी फोर टीम्स और थर्टी सिक्स टीम याद भी नहीं कितनी थे बट दो मेनी टीम्स दो मेनी प्लेयर्स वेर दे एट क्वालिफाइड फ्रॉम हाउ दे एट कम आई डेंट नो द फॉर्मैट आई डेंट नो हाउ दे क्वालिफाइड एंड देन दिस विल डू नाइनटी मिनट प्री शो said for 90 minute game what are you going to talk 90 minutes hmm. it doesn't make any sense so nothing was aligned hmm. and i did it for 7 days and it was a resounding failure i was a resounding flop i only was supposed to do it for 7 days hmm. and after 7 days when somebody else came in people thought i'd been fired so even yeah. that worked against me yeah right <laughs> they were like oh look at him man a flop good they fired him and everything to chhod ke chala gaya aur ab to chhod do wo agle 2 3 hafte tak galiyan aati rahi us pe so i realized ke yaar agar नो इज नो यार अगर नहीं कर सकते तो मत करो क्योंकि यू नॉट डूइंग एनी बडी अ फेवर अल्टीमेटली आई थॉट बहुत बड़प्पन है ना कि उनको मैंने हेल्प कर दी लास्ट मिनट में उनकी भी कहाँ हेल्प हुई करेक्ट उनके शो की रेटिंग खराब थी उनकी इंटरनल मीटिंग हुई कि ये क्या है कहीं पे कोई बात हुई कि ये तो दारू पी के शो कर रहा है कुछ ऐसी ऐसी बातें होने लगी वहाँ पे कैसे मैंने कहा यार तीन बजे सुबह तुम शो करा रहे हो साठ मिनट का बिटवीन मैच बिटवीन सऊदी अरेबिया एंड समबडी एल्स नो बडी नोज एनी प्लेयर जो जो प्रोफेशनल फुटबॉलर बैठा है वो भी कह रहा है भाई क्या बात करेंगे तो मैं क्या करूँ नहीं मतलब बिल्कुल थ्रोन इन द डीप एंड तो उसके बाद मैंने किया नहीं कोई और स्पोर्ट एक मैंने बीच में रेसलिंग किया था बिकॉज आई वॉज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टेड अबाउट रेसलिंग फर्स्ट रेसलिंग लीग है फर्स्ट रेसलिंग लीग एंड आई जेनुअली इंटरेस्टेड इन इट एंड आई से Uh, I'll do it. I did that season. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah, I did the yeah. inaugural season because yeah. uh, Navjot Sidhu and me did it. We used to talk a lot about wrestling and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he said, "Hey, wrestling guys have come. Do you want to do this?" I was like, "Yeah, man, let's do it. It'll be fun." <laughs> and uh, we did it, and we really enjoyed it because yeah. we wanted to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm grown up watching no, wrestling, so so there was no <laughs> need. See, that's the thing. So every time you, I, I deviate from want into need, mm. it crashes and burns spectacularly and just brings me back onto my path. Mm. So to understand and have a deep level of agreement and understanding of your wants and needs is extremely important yeah and even if you're doing it because you need to then you should be clear in your head that it's a need that i'm going after yeah. and then you approach it in a way that it doesn't burn you emotionally that much that's true yeah and and yeah, the reason well. the reasons got to be very compelling yeah and as i say everybody has a price Five hundred crore is your soul is soul has some price. This closed, <laughs> right? Five hundred crores. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I have no problem. I mean, <laughs> GK, you have spoken about professional failures. What about a personal failure in your life that you have learned a lot from? It could be a relationship. Could be. I think every like I don't think there is any human being who can walk. Twenty year olds will also have failed relationships mm-hmm. and failed friendships. and uh, i think my biggest learning from all of them is that there are always two sides to a story you end up believing your the mistake we make is we end up believing us so much that we think that's the reality mm. i think my biggest learning is being that it's never the reality it's not the full reality it may be your reality mm. but it's not the reality mm. right so even if relationships fail have the ability to have a conversation so that both of you can learn going forward right because that's what life is na every day you mm. get up and you just try to be a little better and try to just mm. do a little better so uh, i think from all my <coughs> failed relationships which is why uh, people who have been in my life before continue to be in my life there's hardly anyone who's kind of not there mm. i'm sure you'll find if you shake a tree you'll find one or two people who say oh jk is a complete <laughs> but that's it'll be a very small number very small number right and that would have also been inadvertent uh so but otherwise largely it's like okay he's, he's life fine. lived well we just didn't we just didn't get along and that's mm-hmm. fine it's okay to acknowledge that mm-hmm. like you said it's two planets yeah so sometimes mm-hmm. you align and you lock and you go mm-hmm. but sometimes you just drift into different mm-hmm. solar systems and that's okay to acknowledge and saying your life path is different my life path is different and that's okay we tried we tried our best mm-hmm. did you yes we did and Fine, it didn't. It's okay. Get up, dust yourself off, and uh, you know, live to fight another day. Hmm. True. Not take your failure so seriously that you hang up your life on it. Yeah, yeah. You, I notice uh, people get really hooked up, but I've I've never gone too hooked on either success or failure. Hmm. I'm like, okay. What's your personal definition of success, uh, GK? I've decided to make this as my my permanent question for every episode, starting nice. with you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so mine is, I think, contentment. I think that's my uh, that's my definition of success. Uh, I think only like Zen Buddhists can have hundred percent contentment. We can never have hundred percent contentment. But if you can have kind of 
70 to 80 percent contentment mm-hmm. and the rest of it is a fire curiosity a restlessness and aggression and ambition i think that's good mm-hmm. but largely you've got to be able to i think put your put your head on your bed at mm-hmm. night and be able to go to sleep mm-hmm. like without your mind twisting and turning i think that for me is a small success mm-hmm. right my success is no longer a number or a material possession or a or a kind of car or you know that mm. it's it's not that anymore those things are nice nobody says mm. can i take them away mm. but if tomorrow somebody was to take them away i'd say that's fine i have faith mm. in myself i'll build it again so uh, i feel that success faith in your own abilities is kind of a success not not doubting yourself too much we must almost doubt ourselves a little bit because mm. that fires us as creative people and as storytellers mm. but not too much not too right? much having faith in yourself yeah Yeah. True. I was reading it somewhere that if every 10 years your definition of success for yourself is not changing that means you're not evolving. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's so true because I mean definitely if I think back 20 years my definition of success would have been money, a fancy fame. car and great shoes and watches or whatever, right? As mm-hmm. as every 20 year old kid would be. And that sh- mm-hmm. that should be your your purpose. I'm not saying that as a 14 year old you walk around like some you know zen person and go oh okay. i'm you know above all this no you go through your emotions yeah. and it changes i can only give you my definition of success today right? right and if you were to play this tape back to me 10 years later if earth still exists <laughs> <laughs> some of the countries <coughs> might not you know the way global warming the is happening people behind the camera shaking their heads it's not going to add anything so they're young the salt to nikal paayega they're more hope i'm saying you by the salt or earth अर्थ का अनर्थ कर दिया हमने तो दस साल में इट बी डिफरेंट राइट आई बी मे बी फाइव इयर्स इट विल बी डिफरेंट बट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम इट्स दिस इट्स इट्स सम सॉर्ट ऑफ इट्स सम सॉर्ट ऑफ इमोशनल स्टेबिलिटी इमोशनल काम इमोशनल सेल्फ सफिशियंसी दैट यू कैन हैव दैट फॉर मी सक्सेस राइट नाउ जी के आल्सो ब्रेक सम मिथ्स अबाउट बीइंग अ टीवी प्रेजेंटर या yeah for for people who want to get into this profession yeah. what are the myths that they enter into the industry with or they should be able to you know work with from your tips oh jeez uh that stuff uh i think there is a don't try to lie and put on another character on camera because who sustainable nahi hai right who mm-hmm. acting ke liye for mm-hmm. television presenting or if you're doing anything on camera which is if you went the, the more genuine you are live basically yeah yeah the more genuine you are the better it is for you it's more sustainable mm-hmm. in the long run so what does that mean then that means that you bloody well be an interesting person right <laughs> and how do you how are you an interesting person you're an interesting person by the things that you absorb the conversations you have the books you read the films you watch the music you listen to the world you observe travel mm. you know eating different things exploring different cultures that's what so as i i always say that as creative people now here's the thing we could get you know somebody could just come and give us two chits of paper which would have the same joke on them or the same story on them but i'll say it in a way and you'll say it in a way but the words are all the same we read it out how mm. is it how's the reaction to yours different from mine that's because our wheel inside has churned it differently mm. right now what is our sole job as storytellers mm. is to grease that wheel to oil that wheel to make sure that that's always working well mm. and how do you oil that wheel you oil that wheel by everything that you absorb all your inputs mm. right so the books you read the conversations you have the time you think mm. the sunsets you watch the cultures you've explored the travel mm. the food you've eaten the drinks you've had the you know mm. just all those things mm. are the ones that kind of just grease your wheel so i think that's what's important for storytellers is and also i believe censor your inputs right like for example i'm not averse to putting a book down after 20 pages if oh, yeah. you don't like it yeah. yeah watching a film i watch 20 minutes of it and i'm like mujhe koi prize nahi milega ye khatam karke making sense theek yeah. <laughs> true mere life mein ye value add nahi kar raha to chodo and now i've become very brutal about and as you get older people will realize as mortality hits you yeah right you become so protective of your time you're like nahi i don't this i don't need this conversation with this person in my mm. life right now mm. it is not value adding to me mm. right and if it's not value adding to me i perhaps i'm not value adding to that person as well mm. so chodo na fir mm. chalo na kya point hai mm. you're not my mother or father i don't have to try extra hard with you mm. right there is no biological bond over here Mm. that i need to service a little extra mm. just 
conversation it's just a book it's a film it's okay so Move practicing on. detachment uh, from the things is also very important for you to at least from, conserve and, and self preservation basically. yeah and if and i think uh, detachment from your inputs and your outputs like i am very attached to the process and i'm totally detached from the result because it's not in my hands mm. i gave it my best i thought of an idea i sold it i put the crew together i produced it i released it it's all i can control mm. i can't control your reaction when you will watch it can mm. i i can't so then why am i stressing तो जो चीज आपके कंट्रोल में नहीं है उसके बारे में आप स्ट्रेस करके क्या कर लो कुछ नहीं बदलोगे सिर्फ अपने आप को यू मेक योर सेल्फ वर्स जस्ट पुर इट आउट मैन एंड रेस्ट इज अपू पीपल राइट दे लाइक इट दे डिसक इट इज अपू देम वॉट यू कैन परहेप्स डू डिसनेटली ऑब्जर्व इट इज अ प्रोडक्ट एंड से वॉट कैन आई लर्न फ्रॉम इट लर्न फ्रॉम इट राइट ओ मे बी आई चेंज दिट मे बी चेंज द म्यूजिक चेंज द लाइटिंग चेंज माई गेस टू दिस केस आई थिंक Uh, no. You know what should I? What I should, should I do? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I change the color of the couch. Should I? Yeah. Maybe the air conditioning was too high or was it too hot? So all those things you will only if you observe it objectively as a product that you have created. Mm. Once you make it a, ये तो मैंने डाला है तो मेरा life's work है. People criticizing my life's work are criticizing me. me no, right. no, 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 no. They're not criticizing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are not going. I have made those mistakes uh, yeah. about myself. You know. Uh, for me to criticize or even reject my work criticize was okay but rejecting my work was extremely difficult so if i would sit on an edit i'm just not able to take any part out because i'm so attached to it Aray, but for the viewer it's not making sense main to itna part nikalta hu mere edit mein my editors don't want to sit with me yeah kyun main sab hata hi deta hu nahi ye sab ye maine kya kya bola maine ye hata de he's like you're the first person who's wanted to remove your own parts i'm like yeah because it's not value adding yeah so then no, not just my own parts anything that is a part of the the main to apne bank ke na apne nikal deta hu main I'll take my own. दूसरे के निकालने तो हमेशा आसान होते हैं. ये learning मैंने अभी सीखी है. अब you have to be brutal with it. You have to treat it as a product. Mm. Remember, tomorrow if you were, let's say, in the business of making chairs, mm. if a chair का leg was a little छोटा and people sat on it and it wobbled, mm. it's a wobbly chair. Correct. Now, if you came as a carpenter and said, no, but this is my art. If you was I intentionally made one leg shorter. Arey, but that's not a good chair. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you criticize this chair, you criticize me. No. If you call a carpenter and say this chair, this chair is wobbly, carpenter says, "Sorry, my mistake. I'll fix it." Yeah. Right. So you learn from it. So True. treat every creative thing that you have made also as a product. Yes, it is a part of you. Mm. Through the process, it must be. But mm. somewhere towards the end, you say, "Okay, now I have to be objective." Mm. You have to. the ability to look at your own work and in fact anything objectively is something that uh, one must cultivate yeah it's tough it's very tough it's very tough because we get so emotionally invested either a plus way or a minus way with yeah. things that we have an instant judgment for things yeah and it's so difficult to break out of that judgment true yeah. absolutely gk on a parting note uh, you've been a part of some of the most privileged rooms uh, in the world yeah. right and you've met some of the most incredible and remarkable people so how does one work with these people who are extremely successful charismatic and you know they have it all going Please i mean how do you not get intimidated uh, by a strong so, presence oh, okay. of so okay so how else? i don't get intimidated is because i think if you go into a room knowing your own value i think that's important you should always know your own value and your worth mm. uh, remember whenever you enter a room you will always they'll never be it'll never be equals you they'll never be equals right there'll always be somebody who's a little inexperienced and somebody who's way more experienced right so it'll never be equal but uh, you should walk into the room thinking that everybody with less experience is your equal mm. right and people with more experience uh you don't get intimidated because you know your own value So mm-hmm. I know my own value so I am not pompous enough to consider them my equal mm-hmm. but at least I am not uh, self deprecating so much that I think I'm like garbage mm-hmm. right I know my own value I have been invited into this room I have not gate crashed it so sure. I have been invited into this room for a reason right mm-hmm. if they thought I was worthy enough to be in this room who am I to think I'm not worthy Right. Very well. Yes, <laughs> of course. That's really stupid of me, then, right? Of course. So I am worthy enough to be in this room, mm. but at the same time, I should be humble. I should be respectful, and uh, yeah, and just just know your own value. Once you know your own value, I think that really helps in everything. It helps mm. in negotiation. It helps in your demeanor. It helps in your approach, your mm. professionalism. I think all these things just help. Mm. Knowing you know your, your own worth makes it that much more easier for the other person also to put you in. 
in That's the right it. role yeah. that you are best I'm here for. I'm not I'm not uh, threatening you I'm not intimidating you mm-hmm. I'm trying to chalo sab saath chalte hain aage sab ek saath kuch banate hain we are all spokes in a wheel somebody may be mm-hmm. you know uh, uh, a little more experienced than you but at the end mm-hmm. of the day you're all spokes in the wheel so mm-hmm. let's just all try to move forward together right and you know we judge experience also by the number of years or number of projects that one has done and one hasn't but eventually what it boils down to uh, to is that particular day yeah. however experience you might have or might not have but how is that day going for you true and, like i say sometimes uh, sachin also got out on zero no right so some days it just yeah. doesn't it's it not your day happen. it's not and i think for storytellers that's also very important the days you know it's not hitting the middle of your bat don't try to play flashy shots hmm. right just today i'm just going to be solid it's yeah. fine today my main job is to not right mm. so today i'm going to just do that because mm. every day you can't shine and be brilliant you can't hit a century and a double century every day mm. I, you know cricket mm. metaphors people understand mm. so in days that when it's not and some days the greats will tell you yeah right the all time greats will tell you that yeah. some days they show up and it's just not hitting the middle of their bat right but you still got to be there yeah. you got to battle those right. days are harder but then mm. those days don't try to do something flashy that you would do the days it is working for you mm. so understand where you are that day understand mm. what your form is respect the conditions respect what is around you mm. and that day say today aaj na mujhe sirf wicket sambhalni hai apni mm. aaj apna end sambhal ke rakhunga main mm. today is not the day i will score right today is the day i will maybe assist or today is the day i will not let a goal in right i'll defend today what is your bare minimum for that day what do you get done and you're like okay i need to just get by <clears throat> yeah there are some days where you show up and you go your mind is not with you your body is not with you mm-hmm. these are all our tools right as storytellers right. and you you're not there 100% uh, if you're in a situation where you're top of the food chain in that project mm-hmm. yes you can maybe delay it you control things mm-hmm. if i'm a producer i am, and it's just me as the talent mm-hmm. i can say guys we'll do this tomorrow Hmm. right because i know today it i won't get my best hmm. for whatever reason hmm. uh but if there are situations that have to be done today then that day i'll be like okay today my rhythm is not there so let me not try to be too flashy because then it will look ugly hmm. so i'll just let safe. me just yeah let's let play safe today solid. yeah let's play safe and solid yeah let me let, let me just, just be by. solid today that's a great great approach and a great tip Thank you so much GK for coming over and sharing from your tw- over 20 years of experience yeah. and uh, some so. really brilliant anecdotes and you know learnings that you've shared from your journey. Thank you so much for helping us take that journey within for ourselves. I hope so aur uh, agar koi galti ho gayi to humko Rana ji maaf karna. <laughs> Had to na it was it's bacha ke rakha tha maine end tak. It's like I have to do it once <laughs> before I go. <laughs> right you don't know i've how many times i've heard that in my life <laughs> <laughs> probably 1 million times 1 million times true that is true 1 million and one excellent thank you so much for having me on thank you such a pleasure having you gaurav hi i'm gaurav kapoor and i'm going to be on the journey within podcast with shobha rana and uh, actually i'm lying i've already been on it we've already recorded it and it was amazing to aap log bhi aaiye aur usko dekhiye par uske liye you will have to like share subscribe do all those things you already know what to do so please do it and if you do it then we will send you a gift voucher no no gift voucher <laughs> no sorry gift vouchers. it has been cancelled <laughs>